everyone. Today we're here at the offices of Creo, which is an architecture firm here in San Antonio, Texas. I am joined by Chris Feldman with Creo. He's a design principal here. And um, thank you for joining us today, Chris. Thanks for having me. Great. Now, you were a recent speaker um, at our MISA meetup that we had back in May. Um, but maybe there were some people that weren't able to attend. So can you tell us a little bit about what you do here at Creo? Sure. So at Creo, we're an architecture firm. Um, five designers and we're about two and a half years old now. Uh, we, we work on a wide range of projects. We do everything from uh, mixed-use developments to hospitality, uh, even some custom single-family residences. And uh, We really have a focus here in San Antonio on the urban core primarily and um, uh, we're sitting at the site of one of our, our mixed-use projects, Essex Modern City. Um, we have another mixed use kind of develop up, development up in the New Braunfels area, and we just really love, you know, introducing density to areas, uh, these mixed use environments that create uh, just, you know, places that, that, that we personally and that, that, that people want to be in, uh, in a city like San Antonio that's growing so quickly. That's great. So tell us a little bit about your background, um, like where have you worked before, um, where did you go to school, that sort of thing. Okay, so. I went a little bit of a less traditional route. I studied fine arts and economics actually as an undergrad at uh, College of William Mary in Virginia, uh, but always knew I wanted to be an architect and uh, eventually made my way out to Los Angeles for graduate school at uh, SciArc, Southern California Institute of Architecture. Uh, and that was a real eye-opening experience, just kind of, again being in, it's the arts district in downtown Los Angeles and then sort of seeing an area in transition and um, I think it just it really sparked an interest um, for me to kind of keep pursuing that and and you know had some other experiences out there uh, I, I worked for uh, HOK a large uh, international architecture firm and I worked on things from transportation uh, the Anaheim Regional Transportation Intermodal Center and, and it's a mouthful uh, <laughs> down in, in Orange County um, some healthcare. Uh, and then, and then also had the opportunity once uh, to, to leave HOK and to join Paul Murdoch Architects. Um, really, the opportunity there was to, to have the opportunity to work on the Flight 93 Memorial uh, in Pennsylvania. Uh, from there, um, came to San Antonio, worked with Overland Partners um, on a number of projects, Children's Hospital in downtown San Antonio, as well as some you know, corporate offices. And then also, uh, I would say at that point, really started to have an interest in um, and, and working with, with private developers as well, um, especially again in, in an area that's, uh, that's growing so quickly and, and sort of the, the reurbanization of, of downtown San Antonio. So. That's great, that's great. Um, so one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was when you worked for Paul Murdoch Architects, um, you had worked on the Flight 93 like you mentioned. Um, I had the opportunity to go to New York and see the memorial, um, the overall 9-11 memorial there in New York City and um, the, it was very well done uh, and you know, it's, just, it's something that just hits you with the magnitude of that, of that event um, and the people that did that memorial, it was just very well done, very thoughtful design. Um, the one section that was Flight 93 was a very small room, it's probably about 15 by 15, just you know, a few row of benches, but um, the, the video was very simplistic, it was just a map of an icon of a, of a airplane and it would show you kind of at what points at what times you know certain events happened with that flight in particular but the gut-wrenching thing was when they started playing the voicemails of the passengers calling home to their families and it was just so gripping um, and, and horrifying but it kind of it, there was not a dry eye in the room once that video wrapped up and everyone just left feeling about the, you know the magnitude and the weight of that event what was it like being um, at the architecture firm that helped craft the narrative for specifically Flight 93, and you know I'm sure that was you know quite a bit of pressure to make sure that you got it right and, and do it kind of justice. But. Yes, I mean it's I would say to this day you know one of the probably the most moving experiences and uh, and projects that I've ever had the opportunity to work on, and, and I I struggle to think of a scenario where it would be surpassed or any project that could you know I mean every project's different, but um, you know, I think everyone has their own sort of stories related to 9-11, um, and, and I remember the day really well. I'd actually just flown back from the West Coast. Um, I was in, in college at the time, and, and waking up and just seeing the events unfold, 
Um, and, and I think, you know, the thing that struck me uh, when, when the opportunity kind of presented itself to join Paul Murdoch and his team, who, who um, they had developed and won uh, an international competition. And so there were over a thousand entries wow. and had come up with a concept that just, you know, um, really, you know, captured the, the eye and sort of the, you know, all of the, all of the emotions that, um, that were going through the jurors who, you know, were also rep represented by, uh, you know, family members of those that were on the flight. And so I was not involved in that process. Um, I joined up after they had won the competition. And, um, but I think for me, I mean, one of the things was that I still think about to this day, you know, traveling quite a bit is this, you know, like this, that morning, None of those passengers or, or crew woke up and said, "Today I'm going to be, you know, a hero." Right, and so um, they they stepped up, and, it's, and I think that it's just it's such an amazing story, and I, and, I, and I, you know, I think that the memorial and all the things they've done on the grounds have really, um, you know, done everything they can to almost get out of the way and, and tell those people's story. Um, um, you know, I think for both for the. Uh, for their families, obviously, who, who have to live with that loss, but also for our country and, and just, you know, that, that incredible gratitude that I think all of us feel to, um, uh, for, for what, they, what they gave, basically, yeah. to, to, to save countless lives. I mean, you know, the Flight 93 was, was planned to go back towards the Capitol, right? And so if they hadn't stepped in, who knows what we'd be talking about today. So. Um, on the design side, I mean, I think that in a lot of projects, there's a tendency, um, you know, we, we meet with clients and, uh, and the vision, you know, the vision gets crafted. And vision is, is just a word that we use quite a bit in architecture because it just, it, it sets the direction, right? And so if you can't, if you can't get the, uh, the client or, um, or say other stakeholders, stakeholders in this case really being the families of those that were on the flight in a lot of cases is, if you can't get that vision established, then, then there's no real filter to make decisions as you go forward. You know, what's important, what's not important. Um, obviously, there's not endless resources to do these projects, and so uh, having that vision allows us to be selective and really put, uh, you know, heavy emphasis on those things that are really important and then back off on things that maybe aren't. I remember sitting at my kitchen table at night you know, working on, you know, renderings and different design iterations and, and just, you know, kept being sort of drawn to read the articles and the accounts and, and even listen to, the, to those, uh, you know, to those phone calls, those cell phone calls made from passengers back to their families. And it, it's just, it, it, you know, such a humbling experience and, and to have that, um, you know, sort of always in the background and, you know, you know heavy on your heart as you're as you're, as you're really trying to resolve things and make this project move forward. The, the plane went down and it's a, about a 22 acre site essentially and it's a large circle shape that was uh, formerly a uh, mining site and, and, and the plane um, you know, passed over this mining site and crashed into a grove of hemlocks and, um, and so that, that theme and sort of you know finding those things that are important as a way to tell the story you know the, the hemlocks became sort of a uh, an aspect that we could pick up on uh, in the design and so uh, the visitor center which is, is these large uh, cast in place concrete site walls which also are on the same radius um, from the center of this field field of honor is sort of as it was termed um, you know within that there's there's the uh, the actual, um, you know, they've got artifacts from the crash. They've got, you know, audio stations where you can listen to, you know, what you'd reference and had heard at the at the 9/11 site in New York. Um, and, and it's really meant to be um, just a very sort of, you know, a moment to sort of reflect and uh, not be overwhelmed, not be flashy, but just to really zoom in and understand what happened in this site. And how it impacted our lives, how it impacted those lives, and then what were those people's stories before that day? Right. Um, so Chris, tell us a little bit about um, the d overall design of the site and how you come to the exterior going into the visitor center and all of that, how that works. There's there was some symbolism in everything, frankly, and, and that's, you know, as a, uh, 
as an architect and as a designer, it can feel daunting at times. Um, but but you know some of the, the I think key aspects that just really show the um, really the attention to detail and how important it was to to the symbolism and telling that story. Where um, you know, large cast in place concrete site walls. Well, well those site walls were um, essentially board form. If, if you if you're familiar with that term. You know where you, you create a certain pattern with boards, and and then you pour the concrete within it. And you pull the forms away, and you get that that either that striation or whatever pattern it is. And then that 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 pattern in this case was actually uh, hemlocks picked up on by um, you know a lot of barns in the area. I mentioned the plane had crashed into a grove of hemlocks. A lot of the barns in the area were made of hemlock, and so you know he, creating those custom form liners so that. When those forms were pulled away, you had that imprint of the uh, of the hemlock pattern on the concrete. That flight path kind of cut through this what was called the field of honor, and and that that flight path as you, as you get out of your car and you walk down is it, it, it pierces through these large cast in place concrete site walls, um, and, and you know you cut in between them and then to the left you've got the actual visitor center where you've got exhibits and things like that with all of the you know different artifacts or recordings, but then you walk out and it, and it kind of projects out and looks down the hill and at the end there is the glass panel that says, you know, a common field day, one day a common field one day, a field of honor uh, forever. And so um, I think that's just, you know, again, the number of, you know, as a, as, as a designer, the number of iterations you go through to get to that perfect angle on the glass to that, um, how does that, you know, the uh, uh, the precast uh, panels that make up the railing of of of, uh, of that flight path, you know, all of those little details become so important because the last thing you want to do is, you know, in that moment, right, when you know the moment that you described that was just so powerful and so emotional is, you know, have someone running their hand down the side and then they hit like a, you know, something that wasn't detailed properly, right, and it's a distraction and so just any. Sort of, again, painstakingly uh, going through every aspect of it to make sure it was executed and, and again, got out of the way, told the story, and, and emphasized um, uh, that, that overall vision that everyone had committed to. So. Yeah, that's no, really great. I think details, um, sometimes when, when it's not noticed is you know, when you've done it nearly perfectly, so that's a good, that's a very good point. All right, well, th Chris, thank you so much for taking time to talk with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely.